Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. It is the end of the work week, and I know many of you are listening to this have not been at work, and I know it's been a tough week for many people with not having that usual routine. We really appreciate that Eau Claire County um, residents are taking the order seriously and staying home when they're able to. We'll obviously be talking more about that today. Again, this is our opportunity to share with you what is currently happening in Eau Claire related to COVID-19 to give you an update. Today, we'll also be having someone from the um, Eau Claire Memorial Public Library share a little bit about what they are doing to help support all of us um, during this time. So we're really happy to have them here as well. A quick status update. So in Wisconsin, there are 842 confirmed cases of COVID-19 from laboratory testing, 13 deaths, and more than 13,000 negative tests. That's an increase from the numbers that I shared with you yesterday, obviously. Um, the deaths are particularly hard. That hits families and individuals across our state, and that's hard um, for all of us. It's likely that there are more cases than that, as we've talked about before, people that have not been tested or pending tests that are still awaiting results. Um, today on the state webcast, um, our chief medical officer for this also said that there's an estimate that maybe as many as 10 times the number of cases are present in Wisconsin beyond what we have positive tests for. So again, just remember that not everybody is tested. There are likely more people with disease and that really important stay at home ban that is um, in place right now, the order that is in existence is because we need to protect each other. The state will be starting to report overall case numbers related to age and gender. So that information will be available soon. Um, and they are saying that more than 2,000 tests a day are being processed in about 40 labs across the state. Lots is happening to try and identify what the COVID-19 positive numbers look like in Wisconsin. In Eau Claire, there are eight positive cases of COVID-19 from testing. We again got one new case just right before I came upstairs. That case was connected to a, another case we have in the county um, that was travel associated. So not necessarily an unexpected um, addition for us, but it is um, the case number is now at eight. Um, what we know about those cases is all are doing well. They are at home. Nobody has been hospitalized and they are um, really have all been instructed in staying at home and their contacts have been um, followed up with. Again, it's a good reminder to all of us that most of the cases of COVID positive, um, COVID-19 positive um, cases are not hospitalized. Most of people can recover at home. Most people with just the basics can um, take care of themselves at home, getting rest, drinking plenty of fluids. Um, we have heard anecdotally some reports that um, across the US, people are finding on Google or other search measures are finding ways to supposedly treat COVID-19, which are not safe. Please do not do that. Staying at home, staying home till you're sick, getting enough rest and um, doing the normal things when you have a cold are what you should be doing if you have a case of COVID-19. We don't want COVID-19 to spread. So if you are a positive from testing or if you are considered likely to have it based on your symptoms, please stay home. Yesterday, 82 people called the COVID hotline, answered a lot of questions in Eau Claire County related to um, the order as well as other issues. We will continue to have that call center open this weekend, nine to four on Saturday and Sunday. The governor um, did do a media um, event this afternoon, and at that event, he did share some additional information that people in Eau Claire likely would want to know about if they didn't see it directly. He did order today a temporary ban on evictions and foreclosures for 60 days. 
a measure to really support people that don't have a reliable income coming in right now um, and for the um, short term to make sure those people are not out of housing, which is a critical need um, at any time, but certainly in these times where we tell people to stay at home, um, we don't want that to be problematic. He's indicated that he's just signed an order related to um, the Department of Safety and Professional Services, who oversees healthcare professionals, some measures to help work on healthcare worker um, availability, and we hope to see that order soon. He also asked the state legislature to consider sending absentee ballots to all voters in Wisconsin as a way to not have voters come to the polls. We don't know if that will move forward. We are working in Eau Claire County, as our counties across the state, to find ways to support our um, poll workers, to support the clerks that have to arrange the election um, that is going to be happening on April 7th. Um, and we are working hard to make sure that they understand things like social distancing and ways to support a safe and fair election. Certainly those people that are able to absentee vote, we are continuing to support people doing that. The governor also talked about um, the importance of the stay-at-home order and the enforcement of that. So that continues to be an important topic to the governor, obviously, and is for us as well locally. A couple of other additional things to share with you today. Again, childcare continues to be um, critically important for healthcare workers and others that are responding to this incident. Um, we do continue to have the same resources that have been worked on during this effort. And if there are questions about that, please let us know. But that um, child care resource and referral number, again, is 1-800-782-1880. Our encouragement of following the order continues. The weekend is coming. We know that that might mean some people think, now you know, I get to do what I want with my friends. The order continues through the weekend. We continue to tell all of you to keep your circle small. Your circle now, per the order, is your household. Doesn't mean I'll go out today with a small different group of friends to meet up at the park. It doesn't mean I'll get together with a small group of friends at somebody's house. It is your household is your small group. In order to stop the spread, we want the fewer number of people attached to any individual person to be in place. If you are out and about for essential services or if you encounter people when you are out and about to go for a walk or do other things in your neighborhood um, to get some physical activity, give people space. Remember six feet. If you are passing someone that is working on the streets or working on our electrical system, give them space. Don't come right up to them and talk to them with um, not that six foot of distance. Um, the same with grocery stores. Um, when you are there, respect the people that are working. We need them to keep working. We need them to not get sick. Give them the space as well. So COVID testing and what to do with COVID testing, we continue to get questions about that. Again, we've walked and talked through this and Paulette talked about that a bit more yesterday, but those that are tested for COVID-19 and are positives, we, we do talk to those people and ensure that they stay home and that the people they've been in contact with stay home critically important. Those people that have symptoms of COVID-19, if you are sick, stay home. Don't get others sick. Um, test or no test, stay at home. There is, again, no special medication for COVID-19. Again, whether you've been tested or not tested, those normal things that we do when we are sick with a cold are the things that people should be doing at home. Again, there are some um, reports that people are trying to come up with creative and, in fact, dangerous ways to treat, and those will not work. There is no treatment. We have no vaccine. People should be doing the normal things to make themselves feel better um, if they have this illness. Again, if you've been in touch with someone who got a COVID-19 test but was negative, you don't have any special restrictions. So you are not quarantined if the test is negative. So a reminder about that. 
Our incident command structure, the, the structure, the group of people that is working very intensely on responding to this at a county level has been doing the things that we've been doing all along, following up on cases, making sure that personal protective equipment is coming in and out, um, making sure that we're ready for the next stage of this if we get increased cases or we have hospitalization challenges. A couple of specific things we're working on right now that are definitely time sensitive are supporting our homeless population, which I mentioned yesterday. We continue to work through that. Um, supporting elections, again, with the assumption right now that those will likely be happening, making sure that distance is paid attention to in those poll sites and that um, poll workers and um, the folks that are managing each of those sites have the resources that they need um, in order to do that safely. We are also working through today how we're managing things this weekend. Things don't stop because it becomes Friday afternoon. Um, we will continue to follow up on cases. The call center will be open and we will manage any of the emergencies all through the weekend that we need to manage. Do know that that's part of what we do in this work and we will continue to be working over the weekend. So today we have the library to share with us a little bit about what to do over the weekend when you are taking that break. Um, we want people to take care of themselves. And one of, an, one of the awesome ways to do that is by reading a book or using one of the other resources that the library has. So we're really happy to have Jerissa here to share, us a couple, with, share with us a couple of those things. Hello, my name is Jerissa Koenig and I am the Early Literacy Outreach Librarian at the L.A. Phillips Memorial Public Library here in Eau Claire. While the library's doors are closed, we are open online 24-7 and library staff is working diligently to ensure that the community continues to have access to electronic materials and resources they need during this time and beyond. I'm here today to talk about the library's digital collections that are available for everyone, and then hone in on some resources intended for parents, many of whom are looking for opportunities to engage their children in meaningful educational and recreational activities. The library offers digital collections that are available to anyone with a more member library card. This would be a card from Eau Claire, Chippewa Falls, Menominee, Altoona, and any of the other more member libraries. If you don't have a library card, you can register for an e-card on the library's website at ecpubliclibrary.info. You can find the library's digital media on the library's website. Again, that's ecpubliclibrary.info. Our digital collections consist of e-books, e-audiobooks, music, videos, and magazines for children, teens, and adults. With the help of titles from our digital collections, you can try out a new recipe, start a new hobby, um, or strengthen an existing hobby, learn how to make slime with your kids, or not, um, listen to music created by local artists, read a best-selling novel, flip through popular magazines, and so much more. There is truly something for everyone. As for resources for parents, you may have already noticed the plethora of online options for learning and playing. The sheer quantity can certainly feel overwhelming. Starting next week, the kids page of the library website will be updated to feature a curated collection of high quality online resources that will connect children and families with opportunities for reading, learning, and recreation. We will also continue our programming for children, teens, and families online, and we invite you to join us for story time, Lego Club, Parent Play and Learn, and so much more starting next week online, all from the comfort of your home. Lastly, I want to emphasize that while it may be necessary for us and for our children to spend more time online during these um, unusual circumstances, it will be essential to preserve a shared time and space with our kids offline. To protect our social connections with our children and to ease stress during this stressful time, we can put away our phones, turn off our devices if only once a day, 
to talk with and listen to our children, sing and dance with them, read and share stories with them, or be creative and play together. We applaud all of the families who are already doing these activities while we stay safer at home. Please know that the library is here to support you in those efforts. And until we can open our doors again, you can find us at ecpubliclibrary.info. Thank you for listening, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Jerissa. Wonderfully important reminders to all of us. Um, we have opportunities during this time to learn and to have some fun. I shared yesterday that I danced a little with my daughter. So Jerissa, just so you know that, those are good mental health breaks. So, you know, do that. Um, pay attention to the opportunities that we have. We have a wonderful library in Eau Claire. We are incredibly fortunate to have that. And it's a resource that all of us should take advantage of all the time, but certainly during this time, critically important. So a couple of additional reminders and then we'll take some questions. Um, first of all, the order takes time to work. The order that we have in place to stay at home will take time to work. Please give it a chance to work. We need that from all of you. I also want to say thank you to all of you that are working hard through this. The media that is in the room today that's making sure that the message goes out. All of you that are at home. Um, doing what you need to do to support your families and support your friends through being on the phone with them if they're not living with you or supporting them in, in your households where you live. I also want to say thank you to all the little and big ways that people have said thank you to us and Incident Command and at the Health Department. I opened another card today um, from someone that sent a little note just saying thank you. and. Those, those things do mean a lot. They're little, the little ways that remind all of us we're, we're in the middle of this, that, that the team is appreciated. So thank you to those people that are doing that. The smiles, the laughs, and the, the little notes that say that we're making a difference. Um, do that for one another, because I know it, it matters. It doesn't have to be a big thank you, just walking along the street and when you walk past someone with a dog, stay six feet away and say hello and say thanks. You're getting outside. That's good for our community. Again, the website is um, the coronavirus.echealthdepartment.org. That is the place to get up-to-date information. The COVID-19 call center number, 715. 831-7425. Not everybody listens to the media. Not everybody listens to this webcast. Please take some time to share this information with others. We, we don't want the problem to be that someone doesn't know what they should be doing. So really reflect on those that might not otherwise easily connect to the news outlets that are out there and, and share with them what you're learning. It's important that everyone in this community have good information. So questions that you have today. Yeah. Uh, with uh, the stimulus package being approved, awaiting uh, the signature from the president, I guess, can you tell about what that means for Eau Claire? Does that mean more testing that will be able to be done, mm -hmm. uh, more just supplies in general? What, what, will that, what kind of effect will that have for the whole community? Yeah, the question is really related to the stimulus package and both federal and state dollars that potentially will be available to communities to respond to COVID-19. Very frankly, we're still learning. Um, there's a lot we don't know about the specific results of funding coming in, where that will land and exactly how we can support that. We do know that individuals at the federal level, the, uh, the president announced dollars coming in and those dollars hopefully for individuals will help support people in their life expenses that happen no matter if we have COVID-19 or not. Small businesses are also being hugely impacted and those small businesses are also um, part of the package to support. Um, we want at the end of this to make sure that people come out not unscathed because, because I think all of us professionally and personally will have some impact, but um, the minimal impact possible. So again, always we can support businesses in Eau Claire, hugely important. The president and the governor um, who are indicating and moving forward measures to bring dollars um, locally will be hugely important. Um, 
We do know that there will be dollars specified for COVID-19 response. We are today working on some budgets related to that to submit, um, and we are anticipating that that will support things like isolation and quarantine sites, perhaps, um, some of the extra work that we have to do to respond. Um, and we're working through that right now with folks at the state government to figure out what will all be allowable. Yeah. Julian. Uh, Lisa, uh, yesterday you mentioned, uh, I think, an effort uh, to find additional space um, in, in a case you know, for medical treatment or for isolation. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate at all about what that looks like, even in general terms? Maybe you don't want to tell the specifics yet. Sure. So the question is, as what is what do we know about identification of spaces in Eau Claire County for some of the extra capacity we might need in this community? Um, we have identified a location for um, our homeless shelter to be in in order to maintain the six feet distance. So um, the current shelter that individuals have in Eau Claire County is, is crowded. It's crowded on a normal day. Um, and in order to assure the six feet um, safety that we want for all people in our community, we've worked with community partners to find a location for that to happen. We also um, have a list of public and private facilities. We have not secured any of them in a final way because we haven't yet needed them. Um, but we do have a list. We are in conversation with a number of facilities for both isolation and quarantine. So a place where people that otherwise can take care of themselves, they don't need hospitalized care, but they need to be away from people and not exposing others. So a spot where we can have people that don't otherwise have the ability to do that in their own home, we are looking for places for that. That has been a need in other um, states and countries where this disease has spread. And so in the abundance of caution, we are identifying those locations. Empty buildings for the most part, um, empty um, hotel or other lodging units, empty uh, retail facilities, and then empty buildings that the county and the city own. Um, similarly, for surge capacity, strange word, but for the capacity for medical care if we need that. So right now our hospitals do have capacity to treat people that need it. Again, they have communicated to their patients that those surgeries and that care that doesn't need to be done right now, things that are more elective, those are not happening. But um, my understanding today is that there isn't a specific concern about not having enough space in Eau Claire County. When and if that happens, we want to know that we have a place for people to go. So, you know, I, I sadly had a fall yesterday that I injured my hand and I thought at the time, I hope I don't have to go to urgent care. But again, for those kinds of things, we want to make sure that there is a place for people to go um, and we don't have additional exposure. So we're working on that as well. The state has indicated that they will have resources to convert a building here if necessary into a medical facility. So we would be using those resources to help take what is not currently a medical building and change it into that if necessary. So that would be a state-owned building that they would say we're going to convert this? So the question was, is that a state-owned building that would be converted? Not, not necessarily. We would potentially have the resources of the state to help convert an existing building, whatever that building might be, into a building that could be utilized for purposes that were related to COVID-19. So we are partnering closely with the state on all of these efforts, including that, and we would be, again, working with them if something like that was necessary. Eau Claire County is a regional hub, and I think we all know that. So if there's a, a large need in this part of the state, we likely would be looked at for more than just Eau Claire County residents. So we're certainly preparing for that as well. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Um, is there an update on the uh, number of uh, testing uh, done at the county level? Yeah, so sorry if I didn't say that in my update. I do have that, and I hope I have it in my notes, but um, we did um, 
We do have updated testing numbers, and I'm sorry I don't have those right in front of me right now, but the numbers, um, we did have increased tests done um, from yesterday and from what we actually, it was reported numbers from Wednesday, um, and those, those continue to come in. I believe it was about 100 more people were tested. We do have those eight positive cases. And I'm sorry I don't have those numbers in front of me. Yes. Um, uh, the state uh, media call today, they mentioned a potential shortage of um, ingredients used in the test. Mm -hmm. Is that a concern here? Yeah, so the question was at the state media call, they did talk about testing, and one of the concerns with testing is that there are there's insufficient supply of the medium that the test, um, the swabbing, um, item goes into, so a little bit complicated, but part of what we need in order to have a test successfully done, there is a shortage of that supply item. Um, I have not heard that locally. We do understand that testing continues locally, but it is an overall concern, and I know that the labs are all talking to each other, and testing continues to happen, and we anticipate that that will continue. There are a variety of alternatives that the State Lab of Hygiene is working with the other labs on in order to make sure that that particular product we have alternatives for. It does mean that we continue to prioritize testing only those people that need a test, those people that have no symptoms, those people that are being told by their employer to be tested but they're not sick are not priority tests. We really should not be testing people with no symptoms that don't need a test. The priority testing is happening for healthcare workers and those with significant symptoms. Yeah. Do you know how much the drive-up uh, testing has been utilized so far mm -hmm. in the area? And if it's not been utilized, is there plans to keep it going until this passes? Or sure. So the question really is about drive-up testing. Is it is a, a utilized um, spot and what are we seeing with that? I don't have numbers with me right now on that. We certainly understand that drive up testing as an option has been appreciated. Um, it is a way to um, focus that work and so we don't having it have it happening on lots of different doctors offices we have it happening in one place that is really carefully controlling it um, and we expect it to continue but certainly will be I'm certain that those sites are going to be continuing to reevaluate the need for it over time yeah Sure. So the question was really related to healthcare worker availability. That is a statewide question that is being posed. Certainly, we are learning from the experience of other states and other countries. And healthcare workers is, you know, often an issue, not just because of COVID-19. So the state is looking broadly at that. They're looking at people that have been recently retired, bringing those people back into the system. They're looking at students and seeing how we can accelerate getting them into the system in, a, in an effective way. People from other states that currently aren't having significant COVID-19 issues, licensing them quickly in Wisconsin so that they can practice here are all examples of strategies being used. We have a limited pool. We have heard some um, feedback that, you know, the healthcare worker group um, is is one that we need to make sure stays in the place they are, if possible. We don't want healthcare workers traveling around to different locations, and we want to keep people safe in doing that. Um, we do want to make sure that. Um, that we do have sufficient workers though. So we're also creatively looking in Wisconsin and even with incident command, looking at the importance of using people at their full extent of their license or for those tasks that we don't need a healthcare worker for, who can we bring in to do that work? So that's all, all part of the work that's being done. I know that in Eau Claire, they are paying attention to numbers, and that's been, and you know, we have lots of healthcare systems here that need workers, so it's not a new problem in this area, but certainly a concern. 
I did want to share that we did today, um, and there was an announcement recently that Excel Energy, one of our local partners, an extremely important local partner, did donate 10,000 masks to the effort. So we did bring that capacity into our system, and those are moving um, that that. Uh, PPE, we call it, the personal protective equipment, will be going out broadly to the community in priority order. It's not for everyone. We don't need masks in almost all situations. Distance is what we need. Masks aren't protective in the same way that distance is. Um, but for those emergency workers and healthcare workers, we're making sure that those masks get out. The question earlier about cases, I just got an update on the um, not only the number of cases, but our testing. So as of today, we have 287 negative tests um, and a total of 442 tests run in Eau Claire County, again with the eight positives. Other questions? Yes? Yeah, one more on testing. Um, are the tests being sent to any private labs around the state, or is it just the two main? Yeah, so the test, the question was for testing, where are um, the various um, samples being sent? They are from Eau Claire County, they are being sent across a wide variety of labs. So we do have State Lab of Hygiene used, obviously, and that is our state testing lab, but we have many other private labs also being used. So um, the Mayo Lab in Rochester as an example, but other labs as well. So again, thank you, everybody. I hope people have a restful and um, relaxed weekend, that you do something fun, that you remember we're working. And if you have questions, if you have urgent need to reach someone, that know that there is someone there and available. And know that we're counting on you to stay home, to stay with your household, to not risk going out and meeting other people to really hold with what we need to do with this order, which is flattening that curve and making sure that we don't have the stress on our system that could happen if we don't do that. Thank you.